We have a special guest, right? Yeah, joining us right here in studio is Niall Stanage from The Hill. He's usually on a video board, but he's right <laughs> here right now. Niall, thanks for being here. Good to be here live and in person. Live and in living color. Uh, let's begin with a big picture of mm. what the midterm elections mean mm. for so many of us and for the next two years mm. and for President Biden. So there's a lot at stake. You just wrote this new column mm -hmm. uh, and talking about the five big questions that the midterm results will answer. Can you talk to us about some of those questions and answers? Sure, quite a lot there, as you say. So for the start, one of the questions is how bad it gets for Democrats today. Democrats are widely expected to lose the House. A lot depends on the Senate, how that goes. Now, to your point, what it means, as long as Democrats lose the House, they're automatically in difficulty there because it makes it much more difficult for President Biden to pass his agenda. There are other implications like how candidates backed by former President Trump do. That will be seen to some extent as a proxy verdict on him and on his electability. Mm. So now, who's got the most to gain? Who's got the most to lose today? And then how quickly is the focus going to shift to 2024? Well, I think those questions are all linked in a way. I mean, I think President Biden does have a lot to lose if it's a really bad night for Democrats, because that would not only stymie his agenda, it would make these questions about whether he should step aside after one term a lot louder. That speculation is going to bubble up. Now, in terms of candidates that can gain something, we could see some candidates sort of vault up the rankings, as where Gretchen Whitmore, the governor of Michigan, if she wins re-election in a big way, could be a real national figure. So a lot of people with things to gain. President Biden is in a vulnerable position, I think. What races do you see going into a runoff? Well, Georgia is the obvious one there, because in Georgia, there's this unusual rule that we've talked about before. Any candidate needs 50% plus one to win. There is a third party candidate running there, a man called Chase Oliver for the Libertarian Party. In the last 15 major polls, only once has a candidate got 50% or more wow. in Georgia, which was Raphael Warnock hit 50% in one poll. But that still suggests that a runoff is very likely there. December yes. the 6th. December. December the 6th. Yeah, so we're going to, again, like you said. Georgia Part 2. Month. Yeah. Georgia Senate Part 2. We hope, we hope that we get some quick results. Niall, as always, it's so good to see you. We're going to check in with you throughout the morning. I'll just sit at the table till December the 6th. We'll be back. <laughs> 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 well, well, that's going to be a lot that changes point. between Today's now. Today's not the day for sleep, but maybe in the future. Maybe right. sometime. <laughs> Niall, thank you. Now, for all of the election results, you can tune in tonight for special coverage starting at 6 Eastern. It's co-hosted by Chris Cuomo and Leland Vitter. And the election results are powered by Decision Desk HQ, the best political team on television. It is only here on News Nation. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.